looking here at Canvas at our Canvas course, and I'll be updating this screen with this video as soon as it gets done, our intro video. But whenever you come to Canvas, you'll want to check up here to see if there's any recent announcements. I see that there's a blue dot by this one, so it is a recent announcement that I haven't read. And I ask that you go ahead and read announcements because I use them to convey really important information. Most of our course information or all of our content will be in the modules section. If you click on modules, you should see you can start out with the syllabus and then our course setup information. You'll want to go through every one of these pieces of information to get set up and ready to take our class. We have a lot to do, so we want to get it ready as soon as we can. Now, as soon as I complete all of these setup information, tasks by stepping through them, or in my case, I see that I could just go to this setup course summary and mark it as done, but I know that you wouldn't skip ahead like that. So let's take a look at each of these things. I'm going to click on setup, start here, and see welcome. The next window talks about some of our general things in Canvas, identifying the instructor and where things are located. Next, some overview of assignment information. We don't have a lot of assignments for our summer class because we'll be moving so quickly. We'll have assignments due on Tuesdays and our new content will become available on Sunday if it's not already available. The next window gives you some setup information for how to download and install Microsoft Visual Studio using your Microsoft Imagine account. Please don't use the free Visual Studio Community Edition. You can use it to get started, of course, but after that, you need to make sure you've activated Visual Studio Enterprise by using your product key that you get from the Microsoft Imagine site. Make sure you do activate and enter that product key because you know it's going to expire at the worst possible time if you don't take care of it now. The next item in Canvas is a setup for a product that we're going to try using this summer called REPL. REPL is short <laughs> for something that's just automatically wonderful. But the main thing is about REPL is that it's going to be replacing Hypergrade. So um, you may have heard some terrible stories about Hypergrade. We're going to try this summer to see if we can work without it. Now in REPL, <laughs> we're going to take a look at our course. Now I've already clicked here and I have the class up as a student in Firefox. So I'm going to click over there so you can see it. We have several assignments. All of these assignments are optional except the very last one. The very last one in this course is your first project that's due um, the first Tuesday after our class starts. So REPL is going to give you some great information and help you through all of these different assignments. You can do as many or as few as you like. They're all a matter of practice. If you need some help on one of them, you can click Submit and you can tell me that you need some assistance. Let's take a look at this Hello World one. It says right now it um, wants you to make this thing say Hello World. L well, let me run it and let's see what it's doing right now. Here's my code, my code window. And over here, this black window is my console screen. This is my output area when I'm in REPL. And right now it looks like my program simply says hello. And I'd like to update this program so it displays hello world. Well, I haven't been doing my reading, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. Ha ha ha. Make sure you're reading chapter one. This content does go along with that. But I want to update my message, my output message to say hello world. And I see the word hello here is a string enclosed within double quotes. So no matter what programming language I was introduced to programming with, I know that that means that's a string because it's contained in those double quotes. So I'm going to click there in that code and insert a space and the word world and then I can run it again and sure enough now my message says hello world 
so I can submit this and Rebel will tell me if I got it right or not. Now, if you get something wrong, I'll know that you want some help with it. So you can go ahead and submit it even if it's wrong. And then I'll see that message that you might need some help. And we'll see how this works because hopefully you won't have to do a lot to contact me to let me know that something is wrong. Remember, each of the assignments in REPL is for practice, except for that very last one. That's our, our first project that's due next week. And all of these practice activities in REPL are duplicated in your textbook or they enhance the content of your textbook, all designed to get you ready to do that first project. Okay, so that's REPL in a nutshell. I'm going to click Next. And the next window is a lot of different resources that are available for you to use online. There is a summary list available at a website that I like to use to organize content. I'm going to click here to open that site. It's called Pearl Trees and this will bring you to my list of C Sharp resources in Pearl Tree. I have a little readme here for you to take a look at. Um, there are lots of different things that are linked in Pearl Trees here. Our Quizlet course, um, some online coding practice sites. Besides REPL, there are some other ones. Web-based training in case you want a little bit of a different point of view of how something works in C Sharp. You can go to some different training. So all of these resources are available and organized for you on Pearl Trees and it'll be updated as new things become available and are found. Of course, it'd be hard to make a comprehensive list, but Pearl Trees does try to do that. So you can search out there for other C Sharp resources outside of the resources I have gathered and find many, many, many different links. The next window talks about the discussion board. We won't have very many, dis many discussions because we have a really quick class, but we do have an introductory discussion open right now. Don't forget to get that done. Now, each of the different items in Canvas will have a summary section. And as you finish a summary, you need to mark it as done. And then Canvas will let you proceed onto the next item. So I could click next here to go into that week one module, but I want to jump back to the module section so that you can see the change in what I'm seeing. Now, since I have completed all of these items in the setup, I could minimize it, get it out of my way, but I'll remember that those items are still there in case I need to refer back to anything. Now, because I did complete the setup, all of the different week one modules become available. Notice that there's a lot because we don't only have a few five weeks. So in week one, we'll be looking at chapters one through four. And that sounds like a lot, but it's not really that much for you because this first section talks about our syllabus. Then chapter one talks about basic introductory concepts and a little bit about Visual Studio and walks you through that Hello World application that we just looked at in REPL. Tells you a whole lot about C Sharp, so it's really important. Chapter two tells you how to define variables and how to use variables in C Sharp. So you remember every programming language has its own unique syntax. In these first few chapters, we'll get you started with the C Sharp syntax so that it doesn't seem foreign or unusual to you because it can seem that way at first, depending on what your background is. Now, in this third section, there's a REPL project available that's additional practice outside of the assignments. So you're welcome to try it. And there's a video that walks you through doing that project in Visual Studio. So again, you can get a little bit more practice, as much coding practice as you can get. That's what you learn. Now, our next week one module is chapter three, talking about how to do declare subprograms and how to call subprograms. So depending on your background, again, you may have used a language that handled subprograms. 
all as functions or all as methods. Well, C-sharp handles all subprograms as methods, so we'll see that term used a lot when we're referring to subprograms. Remember, subprograms are just those pieces of organized code that we would like to separate out so that we can call on their own or use later, however we want to. Lastly is Chapter 4. Chapter 4 talks about creating classes with C Sharp and how we can create objects and use objects to benefit ourselves and make our lives easier. Now, as we finish up with all four of those chapters, we're going to be looking at doing our exam for the week and that will become available to you as you open up and complete all of these other items. So we want to make sure that we're getting everything done, marked as complete in Canvas, so that the other things that are dependent on those items will be available to us. Now there's no worry, no need to stress about this exam and project because the project is available to you already in your REPL class and the exam will be comprised of questions that are all available to you in the practice quizzes for the different various chapters. So you should have all of the resources available to you that you need to be successful. But I would expect that you'll have to probably do some work every day, hopefully not on the weekends. You always want to take them off, right? But with us having to handle so much data and so much information so quickly, I hope that REPL will help you practice so that it doesn't seem like you have to do as much work. I'll be creating videos for you for each different chapter with some content and some of those videos already exist. You'll find them already on Canvas. As always, please email me if you have any questions or problems. We want to get your questions and issues resolved as quickly as we can because we don't have much time for our class. Along those lines, if you've emailed me and you're not getting a, a response and you have time to work on something right now and not later, please don't forget to call the OTC Help Desk and they may be able to help you with the problems that you're having depending on what kind of situation situation you're in. The tutoring center should also be available through the summer and if you go to the tutoring center website and look at tutoring center for online courses you'll see that they're available oftentimes to chat with you or to help you with your code so don't forget those resources are available to you. I'm going to go back and take a quick look at our syllabus. Because you're in an online class, remember you do have to take a proctored exam. The proctored exam for this course will be in week two, and it will be exam two. So you'll have a chance to look at some practice quizzes and things for the chapter content in that exam. It'll be available to you for quite some time from June 4th through June 15th. OTC is currently working on new facilities for proctored exams where you should be able to take that proctored exam online. I'll get more information to you about that as it becomes available. We are of course going to be, you know, waiting on pins and needles to find out what they want to do, but hopefully we should be able to accommodate everybody. Do not forget about this exam. Please put it in your calendar. Please make sure that on June 13th you set yourself a reminder that you only have two days to get that done because you might need more time. Now if you're going to take that exam um, in some other situation, like I don't know what, depending on what kind of capabilities they give us with this new Proctor UK product, please make sure to give yourself enough time because that proctored exam again is required to pass the class. You see our textbook material. We are going to be using our C Sharp book quite extensively. It'll be a resource to you. It's a very good resource. It'll help you through the semester and through the quick summer. The hypergrade at this point, I'm hoping to not use the hypergrade code. So hang on to it. Um, if you can return it if you really need to for that 
um, do so. But if you can't, I'm really sorry. Just count that as money well spent that you don't have to work with hypergrade. And you can ask people probably at the tutoring center and they'll tell you, oh, dude, I so would have paid that much to not have to use it. So that should be an important thing. I hope that is not a problem for us. Now the rest of the syllabus is the standard OTC syllabus. We see all of our course objectives. This is my office. I won't be there much this summer, so please do use Skype, um, use Slack. All of these are links in the syllabus so that you can easily get yourself set up with these different tools. You're getting into a programming class, so there may be a lot of different sites that you have to set up. It can get, be a little bit overwhelming, so be sure to start a list at the beginning. I've already told you about REPL, which is a product, a website that you'll have to create an account on. Also, there will be Slack. You may want to create an account on Skype. You have your OTC account. We'll be working with some others. So do make a list of all those different websites and account names. And maybe you want to use something like Pearl Trees to do that, depending on what you need to keep. In your grades, because we won't have very many assignments, they're each going to be highly critical. Please don't miss any. Don't be late. Now, um, it's often easy to put things off until the last minute and then run into some sort of issue and not be able to get things done. In order to avoid that, please get things turned in early so that you can, as we said, enjoy the weekend and not have to worry about a bunch of work hanging over your head that's due on Tuesday. Your categories, the different projects, the three projects that we do, will be 50% of your grade. On top of that, we'll have three exams that are another 20%. You have a few assignments like the syllabus quiz and some discussion boards. Those are 10% of your grade. The final project and final exam will be another 20%. So each assignment is very, very critical. As you're working through your code, remember that it's easy on the internet to find resources. Please don't abuse those resources and please make reference to them in your code if you do utilize their resources. Here are links to the tutoris, tutoring lab, to the Microsoft Imagine website to get your free copy of Visual Studio, your course expectations, and of course remember that standard OTC um, attendance policy is in effect. I need to withdraw you if I haven't heard from you in 14 days. So please do send me emails if something's going on so that I know that you'll be back and that you're not um, wanting to be withdrawn. And then we're back to where we start with our setup. So lots to do, lots to see. Take a look at all of the information that's given to you in the setup material and get started on week one. Lots to do. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's have a great time. I think that you'll be able to really learn a lot if you just move quickly through the material. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.